What's going on everybody? My name is Greg Peters and as always you are watching the Car Passion Channel, the place where I teach you how to make your Miata faster than all your friends' cars. Today is going to be a big day because potentially, if everything goes right, you will see the Miata move under its own power by the end of this video. It's kind of hard for me to say right now because I know how much work is going to be involved to get there, but all you guys have to do is sit in your nice comfy chair in the AC for the next 20 minutes and you'll get to see it. In fact, I'm kind of jealous of that. For me, it's gonna be like three days before I get to experience it. In this video, I will be showing you step-by-step step how to do a K-Miata BMW transmission conversion on your Miata. Now, if you haven't heard of the swap, it is the hot new drivetrain swap for high horsepower Miatas. If you haven't seen the video where I cover all the parts of the kit and explain everything, I will link it right above for you to check out. And today, I'll be installing the entire thing. Now keep in mind that I've never done this before, so I essentially have zero experience. So I'm gonna provide the best information that I possibly can to you. As always, if you check out that link in the description, it's gonna go to my website post where you'll find even more information than what I cover in this video. It's gonna be a long one, so grab some frozen Oreos and a tall glass of ice cold milk. Sit back and relax, and let's get started. Now, K Miata offers three different swap options. I'm doing the Getrag 260, but if you're doing a ZF 5 speed or ZF 6 speed, pretty much everything in this video is gonna be almost the same for your conversion. The ZF 6 speed, you do have to install frame rails to accommodate for the transmission mount, but that's the major difference. Now, on top of the conversion, you'll also have to source the appropriate transmission, a clutch disc and pressure plate, which are available from K Miata. I had to get an E30 clutch alignment tool in the case of the Getrag swap, and all three swaps do require that you delete the PPF. So if you're keeping your stock torsion differential, you will need a mounting kit for that, which as you saw in a previous video, K Miata now offers a full PPF delete kit. They are the only company that offers a bolt-on solution to delete the PPF, so make sure to check that out too. All right, I got my K Miata installation instructions pulled up on my laptop, and I'm just gonna take it step by step, so let's get started. To begin, disconnect the battery and remove the drive shaft, transmission, power plant frame, center console, and shifter. The carpet also needs to be removed from inside the vehicle so holes can be drilled in the transmission tunnel. I went ahead and just cut my carpet down the center so I can easily pull it open and drill the holes I need to in the tunnel. That cut's gonna be underneath the center console so you'll never see it and it makes it a lot easier to access the tunnel itself. Without a PPF, you now have this harness that doesn't have anything to attach to. So I just took some of these rubber mounting straps with sheet metal screws and fixed that harness to the body of the car. You've also got a ground wire that normally bolts to the PPF, but on my car there was enough slack in it to where I could just relocate it to an existing bolt on the rear subframe. Just make sure you sand all the paint off where you're gonna bolt that ground. I've gotta terminate all the stock shifter equipment from the transmission because none of it is going to be used. Game Miata also recommends that you remove these tabs so you don't have to modify the tunnel in your car. A small notch does have to be cut out of the Getrag bell housing in order to clear the Miata starter. In this kit, the starter does bolt to the adapter plate. The first thing I need to do to make that happen is drill out the threads on the stock starter. All right, the first suggestion I have for K Miata is to step up the labeling game a little bit on the bags. There's a bag that says BP to E46 to adapter, a bag of Allen bolts in it that's blank, then another bag that just says engine, and then a couple random dowels, and then a random bag of uh, Allen bolts. I haven't figured out yet if I'm supposed to use my stock starter bolts or not. I assume not. These should be actually quite a bit shorter, so I'm gonna try to figure it out. In the engine bag, there are three identical bolts that are the correct length and thread for the starter. So I'm gonna guess it's these and I'll go back and readdress it if not. There's also four larger bolts that correspond to the four large holes in the adapter plate. So I'm sure those are the ones that fix the adapter plate to the engine. That's a really good critical thinking skill to have when you're doing a conversion like this is if you are limited with instructions, you just find, okay, 
how many holes are the same size or the same dimensions and then can I find a number of bolts that equals that? And it'll really help you narrow down what goes where. And I mean, that's even a good skill to have if you're putting your car back together, even if you've taken it apart and you can't remember how it goes back together. And just looking at the starter closer, two of the mounting points, the tabs are thicker than the third one. And of those three bolts, there is one that's a tiny bit shorter. So I'm positive that those are the starter bolts. Now the holes in the starter just need to be big enough for these bolts to slide through. So I'm gonna go track down a drill bit that's the right size. All right, there we go. No more threads in the starter. It's ready to be bolted onto the k plate. The shorter of the three bolts goes in the oval hole, which is the bottom one. Okay, the starter bolts thread in from one side of the plate, but not from the other. And upon closer inspection, it looks like there's one thread at the very end that did not get tapped. I'm assuming Kamiata has probably fixed this problem by now because I've had this kit for eight or nine months. So I'm sure someone has caught it. Luckily, I have a tap and I'll be able to fix that problem. This is M10 by 1.25. Now I can see where the notch needs to be cut. You can see on the E30, the starter is on this side, but on the Miata, the starter is gonna be on the other side. So you basically just have to cut an area right here for the nose of that starter to fit in. Now don't be confused by this top shape of the BMW transmission and the top shape of the adapter plate. The BMW engines actually sit on a slant, so the bell housing is offset to compensate you can see they're not they're not lined up with each other the orientation of the you know the transmission housing itself and the bell housing are offset the upper right hole on the bmw bell housing lines up with this middle threaded hole on the adapter plate so it goes something like that so keeping that in mind when you're cutting the hole for your starter It took a little trial and error to get that cut right, but we got full, complete clearance. On my uh, website post, I'll go ahead and put a picture of this with a diagram showing the exact measurements. So if you're making this cut, it'll be a little easier for you to get it right the first time. Also, the starter bolts did stick out of the adapter plate by maybe a millimeter, but technically it wasn't gonna be able to mount perfectly flush to the bell housing. So I just shaved them down a little bit. If you don't wanna shave them down, you could also just add a washer onto this side so they didn't stick through as far. But just a little side note, and, and it just shows that it's super, super important to really be thinking critical about how everything goes together and just test fit everything and just pay a lot of attention to the details. The last step of adapter plate prep is to put in your dowel pins. These pins go in two locations. Give them a good whack, make sure they're fully seated inside of that adapter plate. Now I'll remove the clutch fork to check everything out. Give them a pinch and then push it through. Make sure the pivot pin is in good shape. This is really a good time to replace it, but unfortunately I didn't have the foresight to order a new one, so I'm just gonna roll with it. This one looks pretty healthy. If you get your clutch kit from K Miata, it will come with the appropriate throw out bearing. So now's the time to install that. Always remember to throw some grease on any sort of moving parts, especially anything that's metal to metal contact. That spring just pops back into place. That's what happens when you uh, push your clutch pedal in. The slave pushes on the clutch fork, which releases the clutch. Next, the factory selector joint from the BMW transmission will be removed and replaced with the custom K Miata unit. There's a little circular cutout on the top and an identical one on the bottom. Just get a flathead underneath each one.
and then push the pin out. That'll come off. First I'll put the factory clip on the new selector joint. So you could use a set of snap ring pliers for this, or if you don't have snap ring pliers, you could take a pair of needle nose, spread the clip out, hook it on an Allen wrench, and you've just invented your very own tool to get your BMW clip back in place. The k Miata piece actually offsets the shifter. If you were to use the stock BMW piece, the shifter would be crooked in the center console, and that's minus street cred. We all know we can't have that. Something else that's kind of tough to tell is this hole that the pin goes through on the stock one is a tiny bit of an oval and it's got a little cushion inside here. So it gives your shifter a bit of a softer feel. The K-Miata unit is locked onto the selector rod. So it's gonna make the shifter feel a lot better. Next is to install the drive shaft adapter on the back of the transmission. So the first thing I wanna do is figure out which holes are which. Cause this thing, you can use it for a couple different setups. And I'm a little confused. It's got a lot of holes in it. So I'm just gonna put it on my drive shaft here and figure out which bolt holes are for the drive shaft first. I got my drive shaft holes marked out and then we got a big triangle, which is not gonna be used on the get track swap. And we got a little triangle right here. That's the one that's gonna be used to bolt onto my trans. Inside my G260 bag, I've got four drive shaft bolts and three adapter plate bolts. Now some BMW transmissions have a big flange on the back and some have a little one. Mine has a little one, which means there's no way to get these bolts through in order to put the adapter plate on. You have to remove this flange off of the output shaft. First, we gotta pop out this old boy. Then hit it with a 30 millimeter deep socket. And always exercise caution if you're using a non-impact socket on an impact gun. Sweet. Looks like you also have to, oh, oh, nope. Comes off by hand, yes. Cool. I was actually proactive and bought a lot of new seals for the transmission, but looking at this one, honestly, they're not leaking at all. So I'm just gonna rock these, and if they start leaking later, then I can always fix them. Yeah, that was a massive fail on my part because the first time I drove the car, the transmission was leaking everywhere and I had to replace those seals immediately. So I highly recommend you replace the shaft seals and the shifter seal before you put the transmission in your car. Red Loctite is recommended on these three because if you have to remove your drive shaft later, you actually don't have to loosen these bolts. And these are three bolts that I would not want to come loose while I was driving. You can just stick a pry bar between the mounting tabs. We'll stop this from spinning and you can get your final torque on it. And that, my friends, is a Getrag 260 that is ready to enter a Miata and put down big power and not break on me. This is one of the bolts that holds the transmission to the adapter plate. I was getting ready to buzz that off too till I realized it comes with these two washers and even though there are three big bolts that hold the transmission in, there's only two washers. But this top bolt doesn't stick out. Those two washers go with the two big boy Allen bolts. The short one does not need a washer. Next is time to install the adapter plate, starting with four of these. You'll probably notice it does not have a starter on it because I was not supposed to install the starter yet. It looks like in order for the plate to mount flat, you do have to remove the 10 millimeter that holds the um, starter plate in place.
Now from the same bag, you're left with two bolts and washers that look like this. These two bolts are gonna go the opposite direction of the four bolts that you put in through the factory dowels in the block. So looking in from the driver's side, that bolt in there that's not tightened down, it's the bottom bolt in the block before the oil pan starts. Same looking in from the passenger side, the last bottom hole in the block before the oil pan starts. The next step is to put the transmission in with no clutch or flywheel. This is just to set up the new transmission mount. We gotta drill the holes for it. If you're working by yourself, it can kind of be a struggle to get the transmission under the car. So you can put it on a slab of cardboard. Swing up your uh, adjustable lip. <laughs> doesn't work as well with the BMW transmission. With the Miata transmission, you have a real long cone off the back of it, and you can control it pretty easy with your knee. This thing's just like, oh, one million pounds force right on your kneecap. Plus, I have no idea how it goes in. I highly recommend that you either put a sling on the front of your engine to tilt it back or use a floor jack on the uh, crank nose carefully to tilt the motor back. It's going to make the transmission install a lot easier. I'm still struggling with it, but it's lining up a lot closer now. Uh, so close for the first bolt in BMW life. Oh yeah, and uh, one other thing I forget to suggest sometimes. Help another person. Another person would make it a lot easier, but... I chose to try this by myself, so here we go. So my biggest scare factor when I put this trans in is looking at how beefy it is up at the front and wondering if my Artec three inch downpipe would clear and it totally clears, but I was gonna have to hack a big piece off the transmission. Yeah, um, it totally didn't clear and I did have to hack a big piece off the transmission, but luckily, it's a part of the bell housing that doesn't matter at all, and I'd recommend that you cut it off no matter what exhaust you're running. If you check out my website link down below, you'll see exactly what piece I'm talking about. Next we have the Get Track transmission mount. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put my OEM BMW transmission bushings onto the K-Miata mount, and then I will mount this to the transmission, and then I'll figure out what angle the transmission needs to be at before I drill the holes for the plates. It does say in the instructions that the transmission needs to sit at a certain angle, but this mount pretty much just wedges up into the tunnel. And looking at the reference picture and the instructions, it looks like it sits exactly where it does on their car. So I'm gonna call it good. I'm gonna mark these holes with a Sharpie and we're gonna drill them. Hope everything lines up. So I got kind of lazy and I just, just took this part apart and then 
down there you can see the holes I'll be able to put the plates in this is a really important detail and I think this has changed by now but it never hurts to test the bearing installed in this flywheel is for an E46 clutch this one is for an E30 the inner diameters of the bearings are different let me show you why that's important this is the one that came in my flywheel this is the one that I ordered separately so it's very, very important to have the right pilot bearing. Otherwise, your transmission will not be happy with you. Just gonna take the perfect diameter socket. And uh, completely destroy this box. Now you can see in there the flywheel's got a little lip that does stop the bearing. When you put the new one in, it's really important to find a socket that matches the outer diameter so you're impacting the outer race of the bearing. If you impact the inner race, there's a good chance you'll damage the bearing while installing it. You'll feel it stop once it's all the way seated and you can also look on the underside to see that the bearing is pressed against that lip. Now before installing the clutch, you gotta make yourself a little custom tool. Before you watch this part of the video, hear my advice. I went with the factory E46 clutch and I was actually able to get it to slip really easily. And I think it's partly due to the fact that my setup makes a lot of torque down low, puts a lot of extra load on that clutch, and that clutch just was not able to hold up. So I'm thinking about going with the ACT clutch to replace that thing. In my opinion, if you're making enough power to warrant a BMW transmission swap, you're making enough power to warrant the ACT clutch clutch upgrade. So I, I would really just recommend going with that clutch. And then in that case, you won't have to worry about making this custom tool. But if you are going with the E46 clutch, then you will need this part of the video. You'll need an E46 clutch alignment tool, which comes with the clutch. But you also need to get an E30 clutch alignment tool. We're going to have to combine these two tools to make something that will work for putting an E30 trans on with an E46 clutch. First thing to do is take the E30 tool and pop the ring out of the back of it. So you're left with just the body. Then do the same for the E46 tool. Now slip that E30 tool all the way in there, drop your pressure plate on, and you'll notice the pressure plate doesn't go all the way on because the tool is too long. It's gotta be short enough to where this little cap in the middle doesn't hit it. So it's gotta be cut down a little bit. Once you cut down the E30 tool, take that part of the E46 tool and just put it into the back. So you've got an E30 body and then the little E46 piece is in the back part there. Then to test fit it, drop it all the way in. And now you've made yourself a custom Getrag transmission swap clutch alignment tool. Next up, you're gonna install the flywheel. In order to torque the bolts, you'll have to somehow hold the flywheel in place. And if you're by yourself, there's a little pro tip. You can wedge a pry bar against the ground into one of the teeth of the flywheel and it will hold that bad boy in place while you torque everything. Also not a bad time to put the starter in, which I'm just gonna fish through the passenger side wheel well. Now the clutch can go on, and this is a little bit different from installing a regular Miata clutch. You put the disc on with the alignment tool in place, and then you put the pressure plate over it. One thing you can do to ensure proper clutch alignment is just wrap the tip of your clutch alignment tool with a layer of scotch tape or packing tape, and that'll ensure it's a much tighter fit inside the bearing. I'll go ahead and put the tool in the disc. And then install the pressure plate right over the tool and the clutch disc.
One thing that's interesting and a little scary about E46 clutch installation is after the pressure plate bolts are torqued down, the disc can still move around and that's because this little plate in the middle holds back the springs. Basically what you have to do is take the bolt out of the clutch alignment tool and then use a 14 millimeter Allen to remove this plate. But once you remove the plate, the clutch instantly clamps the disc in place. So if it's not perfectly aligned, you're kind of hosed because you're not supposed to pull the pressure plate off again. It's a self-adjusting deal where if you pull it off, uh, you can't reuse it. So you pretty much have one shot to get the disc alignment right. Oh. Oh. Okay, this is the ultimate pro tip. If you just rotate the center plate counterclockwise a tiny bit, you can see it's like, I don't know, a third of an inch or something, like maybe uh, six or seven millimeters. It lets the pressure plate clamp the disc only a little bit to where you can still move it around. Now, I'm gonna feel around, make sure the alignment is still good, and I can confidently remove that center plate, and we should be ready for a trans install. Pull out your clutch alignment tool. Oh my God. I think it's in. Do you see that? Do you see that? Booyah, booyah. Victory run. Go. Clearly excited. That is such a relief getting that done. That's gonna be, like that was one of the scariest parts of the swap is being able to get that thing in. Sorry, I'm really out of breath. The transmission's heavy. Pretty much everything else should be bolting stuff in. All right, I really gotta go to work now, but I'm gonna continue this tomorrow morning. I'll see you guys in about two seconds. A few moments later. Now it's time to see how good I drilled those holes. I put the transmission mount on loosely. So you're actually supposed to feed the bolts from inside the car down through the mount, uh, but that's a lot more difficult when you only have one person. So what I'm gonna try to do is push the mount up into place and then put just two of these bolts through backwards and that will hold the mount up in place while I go inside the car and then put the plates on and feed bolts back through. So all I did was put two bolts in place on each side of the mount and that'll hold it in position while I put the plates on the inside. Just gonna take your little carpet hold down strip off there, the Phillips head. And we can dive under here. There we go. All right, that was a little bit of a fight. Uh, the holes weren't perfect, so I just had to drill them a little bit bigger. I should have done that to begin with. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. We got them all through, so I'm gonna throw the nuts on there and then I will work on the passenger side. The passenger side plate is the same procedure. The only small difference is the kit does come with one short bolt. That one is gonna go in the lower rear hole of the mount. All right, we are one step closer. Trans install is looking more permanent than ever. Let's move on to the next step. Next up, I'm gonna do all the new hydraulics for the clutch. We're gonna be replacing the master cylinder, slave cylinder, and clutch line. So you have to remove all of your factory equipment. Start by taking off the clutch hard line. I'll then come over to the passenger side of the bay, down to where the hard line becomes a soft line, and loosen that 10 millimeter, and you'll be able to pull the hard line out. Now the clutch master cylinder can be removed with two 12 millimeter nuts. All rusty boy. Adios.
Okay, come with me into the foot well of the Miata. Now, since the new clutch master cylinder uses a little bit different rod design, you're gonna have to remove the rod from your clutch pedal. Just remove that one little C-clip. Once you get that clip off, you can just push the pin out and your push rod for your clutch will come off like that. When you go to put the new master cylinder in, you'll notice that it's slightly larger than the opening in the firewall. You do have to just buzz the perimeter of that hole with a Dremel or other cutting tool. Next, you can put the master cylinder adapter plate on, which it bolts into place the same way that the stock master cylinder does. It's a good time to install the reservoir before you bolt in the master cylinder. And then bolt it into place. Next, you have to attach the new clevis to the end of the master cylinder rod, and that's also gonna to attach to the top of your clutch pedal. So first thing to do is undo the clip. Take the pin out. Don't forget to thread the adjustment nut on first before the clevis. Then you just slip the pin through. Lock it in place and you're ready to adjust your clutch pedal after bleeding. Next, it's time to install the clutch slave cylinder. If you're installing a Getra, you'll have an E30 slave cylinder which gets installed upside down for clearance issues. But before putting the slave in, you'll have to install the line adapter. This has two sides, a pointy side and a flat side. You wanna make sure that the flat side goes into the slave. It won't bottom out all the way, but just thread it in until it stops throw a ratchet on it and give it just a little bit of a crank. You don't want to over tighten it. All right, now there's a little indentation on the clutch fork inside the trans. You want to make sure you put the tip of the rod into that indentation and then push it onto the trans and then get the nuts started. Now you can run your clutch line from your master down to your slave, but first I'm gonna slide some of this protective heat shielding onto it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got this stuff on Amazon or Summit or something like that, just for like protective line coating or something. This stuff works really good. This line is gonna be right next to the downpipe, so I wanna protect it as best as possible. The slave cylinder is also gonna be right next to the exhaust, so I'll probably either heat wrap the downpipe in that area or put some protective heat tape over the slave itself. You really gotta pay attention, especially on a turbo car, when you're doing custom stuff like this, what is gonna be extremely close to heat sources. So just take your banjo bolt with one copper washer on it, slide it through the line, Put your other copper washer on the other side and then bolt it into the master. Down here on the bottom, hook your line up to the slave cylinder. Now you're ready to bleed the clutch. I'm not gonna cover that in this video because I already have a whole video dedicated just to that. I'll go ahead and link that in the description. Next thing to set up is the shifter. So go ahead and unravel this piece of art. The only thing you kind of have to pay attention to here is on either side, there's a little plastic tab. Those tabs are gonna line up with the little notches inside the shifter plate. Just give that shifter ball a little grease. Then from the bottom, slide that bushing on, click it into place, and then just take the plate, drop the shifter through it. Make sure those tabs are where you want them to be. Take it out to a nice hard surface. Put some weight into it, that's it. You'll feel it click into place, and then your shifter plate's assembled, ready for installing the car. Drop your shifter plate in just like the stock one. And the kit comes with a little bag of hardware that's all shifter linkage related. There are four Allen bolts that are gonna be your new hardware to fasten the shifter plate to the chassis. That is factory looking. Center console goes over it just like stock. Use your stock shift boot. Now we got the shifter rod installation, which is gonna go from the bottom of the shifter up to 
the uh, selector joint on the back of the transmission. Oh my god. <laughs> when they say short shifter, they're not kidding. That is, that is that is epic. I'm so excited. Guys, we are literally a drive shaft away from driving the Miata. Let's jump back under it. Okay, okay, drive shaft, exhaust, diff mount, wheels, interior. I got a little excited, but we're getting there. Occasionally, we have found that certain transmissions will require the pilot shaft and the center of the flange should be ground down to millimeters or so in order for the drive shaft flange to fully seat against the adapter. Get the grinder back out. All right, we're looking good now. So those bolts are supplied with the Kamiata kit. And then at the rear, we're gonna bolt that thing up to the Torsen. You'll use your factory bolts. Okay. Drive shaft is in. I'm getting pretty worn out. I've been at this for like a week and a half now. Next up, since the PPF is deleted, you have to have a way to mount the nose of your differential. And for that, I have the Kamiata PPF Delete Kit. Now, I recently did a video on this kit, which I'll link down below, but for right now, I'll show you how to install it on your Miata. Start by taking the diff mount and pushing it into the subframe brace. Put a nut and bolt on it, but don't tighten it down all the way yet. So the brace bolts onto the NB subframe. That's why I had to swap the subframe in my car. Um, if you watch all my videos, you'll know I had to swap it twice because the first one was bent. Anyways, you'll also notice that I have this bracing right here. This bracing is from an NB. Um, it's pretty important to have it. I mean, you have the threaded holes for it. Why would you not want extra chassis bracing? But it's also important because where the diff mount sits, uh, there's a little extra space here, and that's gonna put the nose of the diff at the correct angle. So it's pretty important to have these braces. The only problem is on an NA, you don't have the threaded holes in the front. So really the easiest solution is just to go through the floor uh, with a nut and a bolt and a large washer on the other side. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. It's not optimal, but it's better than nothing. There is one bolt that goes in through the top of the diff and the subframe is in the way when you go to try to put that bolt in. So you have to lower the diff a little bit to put that bolt in. Um, just the two diff support plates, there's a 17 millimeter and two 14 millimeters on each one. Throw a jack under the diff, take those little plates off. You don't have to do anything with the axles or anything. And then you can lower the diff down like that. Then you'll be able to pop that bolt through the top. Just drag it back up into place and put these support plates back on. All right, so the rear bolt goes from the bottom to the top and it's got a nut up there. The front bolt is the one I had to lower the diff for that goes from the top to the bottom and actually threads into the bracket there. And then you have the actual bolts that hold the brace to the subframe. Once everything is in, you can tighten it down and you are done. The only other little things with the kit are on the Getrag, you've got a little two-prong sensor up at the very top there. That's your reverse light switch. The kits come with an adapter plug, so you can run your factory reverse light harness uh, in there. They accidentally included a plug for a ZF instead of a Getrag with my kit, but it's really no big deal. I just have to wire these two wires up to that sensor. There's no polarity. You can switch them around and it doesn't matter, and then I'll have my reverse lights. If you're installing this kit on an early Miata like mine that has a cable driven speedometer, you can just eliminate the speedometer cable because the BMW transmissions do not use one. That leaves you with a problem in that you are not gonna have a working speedometer. Now K-Miata currently doesn't have a solution for sale, but from what they told me, they do have a solution that's pretty much ready to go. If it is available at the time you're watching this video, I'll go ahead and have a link in the description. All right guys, well that was the ultimate guide on how to put a BMW transmission into your Miata. 
Miata using the K-Miata kit. If you made it to the end, thank you so much. If you are doing this conversion yourself, hopefully you found this video immensely helpful. If you're not, hopefully you enjoyed it anyways. Hopefully you learned something. I included links below in the description to all the parts you saw in this video as well as some of the tools that I used. If you have any questions about this conversion, go ahead and drop them down below in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. Or if you have a little bit more complicated or more technical questions, you might want to contact Kmiata directly. Don't forget to check out their site, kmiata.com. I am just insanely excited to have this kit in my car. I'm gonna be doing separate videos on, you know, as far as how the car drives with the kit in it, how, how it feels different, all that fun stuff. I hope you enjoyed the install. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on it, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.